Okay, RP. You got a crazy Brazilian, a hot-headed Colombian, and a laid-back Australian. Racer fans, Racer.com and Racer Magazine fans want to know, how are you going to make this group work next year, son? Well, I'll tell you, it's, you know, we need a little shake-up. It's good. <laughs> Uh, Juan Pablo is highly motivated to come back and show that he's uh, as good as he was when he left. And uh, to me, what an opportunity, what an asset. When Chip decided you know, not to keep him on the NASCAR team and he was available, Tim Sendrick and I had a chance to talk to him. And I said, Tim, it's your call. If he's ready to go, we're ready to go. And I can tell you, the interest in him from a sponsorship standpoint has been terrific. And when I think about the new announcement at the Speedway, to think that we can run two races with a sponsor at the Indianapolis racetrack and to have him and Will obviously and Elio, we've got to really make him make it happen this year. Uh, we're going to have a great team, but uh, to me, it's uh, they're all like uh, brothers, you follow me? And sometimes <laughs> brothers fight, but they get along because they're in the same family. Did you, do you just talk to Montoya in passing? Because Cindric said they just mentioned something on pit road at Michigan. Was this just a shot out of the blue like we, we were told? Well, absolutely, because I was really overseas when this thing really came uh, to fruition. He was uh, supposedly, I thought, going to the 78 car, uh, the furniture row car, but uh, had a conversation with Tim, and he called me, and I said, if, if Juan Pablo wants to go, I'm ready. I mean, he's been a friend of mine. Obviously, he's done a great job for Chip, and I wouldn't even be thinking to talk to him if Chip had him on, on some side of a retainer, but he was free, and that was one of the things I asked initially. And to me, uh, you know, what an asset. Uh, and he's motivated. That's what we want. Don't you think he was he was such a badass in cart, and it didn't even matter if it was the old Toyota engine and not even the best chassis in 2000. He was still excited to watch. He goes to Formula One and wins races, and then he just kind of fell off the map. He always seemed like to me like a guy that wanted to lead every lap, just like Bobby Unser. Well, I think that uh, probably that's true, but in NASCAR, obviously, you know, it's, it's very competitive. The cars are important, and I think at the end of the day, he had a great race here that he lost because of some tenth of a second in the pit lane. He's a racer, and as you say, he can drive anything, and it's going to be interesting to see him come back hopefully to get him in some testing before the end of the year. Uh, at this point, I've got to talk to Chip and see if he's going to release him. I hope he will. Is he Now, I, I've been texting him back and forth because he wants to know about the schedule. And I said, no more Long's Donuts in Indianapolis, Montreal. And he said, don't worry. Is he going to be fit by January 1st? Well, he, he went to our shop. He told me he lost five pounds already. I said, look, I'm going to put you on the scale, and you're going to, we're going to set a number where you need to be before we start the season. But, but I think he'll be there. All right, RP, as usual, it was one of the great surprises. That, I'm not sure it was quite as great a surprise as the Mercedes engine in 1994, but this was pretty close. Pretty good, huh? Well, you know, that was a good one, but uh, as you know, you got to keep things under your hat until they're really going to happen. I know. That's why you're the captain. Thanks, brother.